Hello. Welcome to the Monroe Walton Center for the Arts Virtual Creative Classroom. I'm Donna Kaufman, and this is our first ever <laughs> mini uh, watercolor um, watercolor workshop. Let me just tell you how these little mini courses are going to work, and then we are going to get started. And I am not, you know used to doing this yet. So I'm hoping that you all can just bear with me because I have just, I'm just going to hit go on the camera and we're just going to let it roll and we're just going to see what happens. Okay. So in this first session, what I'd like to do is really just go over the supplies that you're going to need to start this basic of the basics watercolor course. First thing that you're going to need is watercolor, okay? So watercolor comes in a couple of different um, forms, okay? So you can get um, watercolor in, water comes in, watercolor comes in tubes, watercolor comes in, these are pans, these are extremely convenient if you want to go and you know, paint outside or on location, or you want to have your supplies, you know, just very portable, ready to go, okay? So it comes in tubes, it comes in pans, it comes, okay, it comes in cakes too. These are cakes. These are those, whoops, these are the little um, sets. I think you can probably get these kind of little sets at any big box store, craft store. Uh, you might even be able to get them at a grocery store. I don't know. Um, but these are cakes and I'm going to sort of explain the difference in some of these to you. Um, let me show you this. Okay. These tubes are what I used to fill. This is an old paint box, really old paint box. And I used these tubes to fill the um, wells in this really old paint box. So, um, so anyway, let's get down to tubes. I like tubes because you can put them in it. You can create your own palette. You can buy just the colors that you like. You can squeeze them into the wells of a palette. Ah, oh, cat hair in my paint. Um, you can squeeze them in the wells of these palettes and just make some very, um, you know, you can just customize the palettes to your color preferences, whether you like, um, like I like really, I like very earthy colors and warm colors. And so that's a palette that, um, I've just custom created for myself. When I first started out with watercolor though, I started out with pans, not these pans. These are, these are pretty new. Um, but I started out with pans and these pans are incredibly convenient. This is a, just a general set of a good set of colors. This is just a basic set of colors. Um, most sets like this come with like, they come with a little brush and these are the, you get palettes, get nice and messy. Watercolor artists love beautiful, messy palettes. Well, <laughs> I like beautiful messy palettes. Everybody might not like beautiful messy palettes, but I do. So, so, um, so that's what I want to say about watercolors. So you're going to need a set of watercolors to, you know, carry on with these sessions. Um, so whether you get tubes or whether you get pans or whether you even go and get this little I think I probably paid five dollars for this set. I don't use it. Um, it's just pretty, you know. It looks like candy. <laughs> I, look, I like all the colors. Um, but I mean, for what we're doing, for just starting out, you know, you may want to get this set. Um, it will get very frustrating very fast. But for the projects that I have lined up. Um, for just these little mini courses, this set would be fine. And that way you're, it's, it's not a major investment. Um, okay, so that is paints. And um, 
And so let me just go ahead and say too, these are student grade watercolors, okay? These are these are the um, upper end. This is Windsor and Newton Cottonman line, and, and I like them. Um, I use these um, in college. Um, they're, they're a very good, they're a very good set. They're very transparent set. They, um, are, you know, they work like watercolors should work. These sets are going to end up, these sets are kind of chalky. And when you rub your finger, when you paint and you rub your finger on them, you can kind of get that chalky, um, chalk off on your finger. Um, but these Cotman's are pretty good. I personally, my favorite though, is this is the Van Gogh line. And for my taste, I like these better. I, these colors really pack a powerful punch. These are very translucent and still beautiful, but these, um, I really like the color selection in these and I really like the brightness of the colors in these and I'll be able to show you that as we go um, as we move throughout the course I'll be able to share some of that information with you you know when I get more comfortable talking on the camera this is really strange right now um, but okay so that's a little bit about watercolor the next thing naturally that you're gonna need are watercolor brushes um, Watercolor brushes, they come in, you know, they come in different shapes. Personally, I like round brushes. Um, I've got some brushes that have cost a small fortune, and then I've got some that, you know, are not that expensive. And so for this, um, for this, the purposes of this um, class, though, I find, let's see, what, what is this one? Okay, this is the Master's Touch. This is from Hobby Lobby. Um, those actually are pretty good and they're very affordable. Um, what I have here is a size eight. This is a Princeton, I like it. I have a size eight. I have a size, oh, I have a size six, a size four, and a size one. Okay, this is a very good, um, selection of sizes and um, I find that I can do just about all my painting actually I've painted for so long I can do just about all my painting with this one um, but I mean it is fun it's fun it's fun look at this one this one's really fun because I like to paint big and um, and sling lots of water and this hold lots of water um, they're also like this is a filbert and a filbert does really pretty petals. Like if you're gonna, um, if you like to paint flowers, botanicals, it does really pretty feathers and leaves. So um, I don't, you know, when I first started out, I didn't invest a whole lot of money in paint brushes. Um, I just, I wanted to learn. I wanted to take my time. I wanted to learn. And as I learned and, and and actually, when I found out how much I loved watercolor um, and did my time practicing with with everything and getting to know what I liked, um, that's when I was able to start investing in some better quality things, the better quality brushes and paints. Um, I teach with the I teach with these brushes. I teach with this Cottonman line because I want to work with, you know, I want to work with the same type of paint that you might go out and get if you're just brand new and starting out. These Cottonman um, watercolors, you can get a small palette of um, the Cottonman watercolors for maybe, I don't know, $22. It's probably got 12 to 14 colors in it. It's paint, they're pans, um, but they're a really good place. They're a really good starting point. They really are. You, you can't, you wouldn't go wrong with either one of these. Um, okay, so that's brushes and that's paint. And now I wanna show you paper. Um, have over here, 
This is um, Canson XL watercolor paper. I think, well, this came from Hobby Lobby, um, but you can get this. I have gotten this at Walmart before, I think. Um, this is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. This is a great student grade watercolor paper. I don't have I haven't had any problems with this paper peeling or, I mean, it'll warp. Um, it's not 100% cotton, so um, it does give you a different look than, say, if you look at a professional watercolor artist artwork, it's going to be on 100% cotton paper. It's, it's apples and oranges. I mean, this is, I think, probably cellulose base, um, but... I find this works very good and it doesn't, you know, like break the bank when you're just going through, because when you're first starting out, really you're just going through piece after piece after piece of paper, just learning brush strokes and just learning how to control water and paint. So this is a good place to start. Um, also, if you want to spend just a little bit more money, this Fabriano uh, Studio watercolor paper, it is, okay, so there's 30 sheets in this. There's 12 sheets in this, okay? This is cold press, um, 140 pound cold press, but it is 25% cotton. So you're gonna get a little bit, um, it's a little bit better than this, and, and I like this. This is fun to work on, so if you spend a little bit more, you can get this, but it's a lot less paper, okay? This is 30 sheets, this is for, uh, what I say, 12 sheets, okay? Um, let me show you this. Ta-da, this is Arches. This is 100% pure cotton watercolor paper. It's 12 sheets. I don't even, the price, I don't even have the price on this. It's more expensive, um, but it is, it is worth the money. You will see a difference. It, I mean, it feels, it feels different, um, but I, I would not, this is after you've practiced some, so I would not, you know, unless you just want to um, just go crazy and treat yourself. Um, I would start here, but if you can afford this, go here first. Once you go and use this, you won't want to use anything else. Um, I do want to caution you when you're buying watercolor paper. There are, there are a couple of brands that I have bought that they're frustrating, I think, to the new watercolor artist. And that would be, and I hate to do this, but I want to caution you guys, because if you go out and you buy this paper, I'm afraid that if you're brand new to this um, medium, then if you go out and you get this paper, I think that you're going to be very frustrated. And um, the this is one of them. This is the, this is Hobby Lobby's brand of watercolor paper. I loved the square format, and that's why I bought this. Because I have worked with watercolor for so long, I started working on this. I saw the problems that I was having with it, and I am able to work within the limits of the paper. But it's only because I've been doing this for a long time. I do use this paper. I, I really like using gouache on this paper. Uh, watercolor on this you put a line of watercolor down or you put a stroke down and it just, it bleeds. It's, you can't really get any kind of edges at all with this. And so, you know, I would caution you on this and I would also caution you on this brand and this brand is at Walmart, okay? So I would caution you on Grumbacher's um, watercolor paper because it pills. When you paint, and it, 
it doesn't even take a whole lot of water, but it starts to peel, the surface starts to peel, the paper starts to peel, and it, you know, that's very frustrating with this. Like I said, this is good if you wanna use gouache or acrylic paint or, you know, a very loosey-goosey style with the watercolors and you don't care if you don't have any kind of edges at all, then this is fine. Okay, so for our watercolor sessions, you're gonna need paints, you're gonna need at least one round brush, but you can get a nice set of synthetic brushes anywhere. Just make sure that they're for watercolor, okay? Watercolor, I think a lot of synthet, uh, synthetic sets will say watercolor and acrylic. So just make sure that it does list watercolor on there. Um, so, like I said with the watercolors, Cotman, Windsor Newton Cotman, the Van Gogh, I wanna say Van Gogh's by Royal Talons, but I'm not sure, just put in Van Gogh, like go on a search online, go to Amazon, search online um, Van Gogh watercolor set. This is the general set, it has 15 colors in it, it's awesome. Um, this also will do for just what we're doing in, in this little basic course, but um, this is set, a set, I believe, this probably came from Michael's, and I think I paid $5 for it. Um, you are also going to need a couple of household things. You're going to need two cups of water. You know, watercolorists, they work differently. Some use two cups of water, one for clean water, one for dirty water. I use two cups of water. I use one water for cool colors and one water for warm colors because as the water starts to get um, the paint in it, it starts to color, you know, as it starts to get colored from the paint. I actually paint with this water too. I actually have been known to save this water for a while. I don't know. I just like it, you know? It just works for me. So you're gonna want a pencil. You're gonna want a, I like a kneaded eraser with watercolors. It's just a little bit more gentle, but you could use, you know, you, you know, my beloved pink pearl. You could use that. <laughs> I think every time I read that, I just I always tell my boys, oh, if I had a little girl, that's what I was going to name her, Pink Pearl, because <laughs> I love the eraser. Um, but either one, just eraser will be fine. You're going to want some washi tape or some um, masking tape um, to tape your paper tape your paper down because when you paint with watercolor, you're going to need to tape it down so that it won't, um, it sort of helps with the buckling as you add water to it. Um, I also in love, you know, these are like dirty socks. They were clean when I got it, right? This is like an old athletic sock. But what I do is I put this on this hand so that my oil from my hands don't get on my paper and then this goes on this hand and as I paint paint you know and I need to knock some paint off it goes straight on the sock that's just what I do I also have a you know I'll keep a regular I'll keep a paper towel or um, I have a rag over here to the side I've got a lot of stuff piled on it right now but um, but I do keep that as well. So that is our supplies demystified. Do, 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 do. Um, so go gather your supplies and meet me back here for um, our next little watercolor course. Thank you. Bye.